Again, thank you to all the staff members here at Clayton and to everyone who's joining us over Zoom. Uh, this is really cool. We have uh, teachers at Thales as well as parents at Thales who are attending over the online portion of this conference. And so as far as bringing our mission statement to cultivate excellent people through the study of truth, beauty, and goodness um, to all the different members of our Thales community to see how we can all become more excellent in this common endeavor called classical education. I know it's very presumptuous though uh, for me to be talking about what makes a parent of excellence as if this implies that I am somehow an excellent parent. I'm not gonna pre pretend to be that, but I am a parent. Uh, I've got uh, three kids at home, uh, ages seven, four, two, and a baby on the way in October. And it's my grand ambition that all of my kids would one day learn Latin. I even pay them a dollar for each lesson on Duolingo that they do with me. Well, it, it was a quarter, but when they heard me complaining about inflation and rising prices, they started raising their prices too. And there's no hope that they're gonna come down anytime soon. Well, one day I asked my son, Hunter, uh, quid agus hodie, which in Latin means, how are you doing today? To which my son responded, why do we have to do this? <laughs> Not in Latin, mind you. To which I responded, because I'm your father. I didn't say it like that, but <laughs> I'm your father and it's my job to fill your heart and mind with good things. And for me, I feel like that idea, filling the hearts and mind with good things, mirrors, brings together my, my role as a father and my calling as a teacher to fill the hearts and minds of kids, whether or not they're my own, with good things. Continuing the Latin frame, the word parent actually comes from the Latin perio perare, which means to prepare. So we get this idea of preparing to one who prepares to parent, as seemingly our job as parents is just that, preparing our kids for school, preparing them for college, preparing them to leave home, ultimately preparing them for that sad day that they may no longer need us. At Thales, we hold it as a deeply cherished principle that we teachers are here to assist the parents in the growth and development of your child who for a limited time is our student. We're ultimately here to assist you in the raising up of your child in the way that they should go. This is a collaborative effort, a matter of teamwork in which we're working together to help develop all of the skills needed for that child to succeed. At a classical school like Thales, parents and teachers are working together for the mutual benefit and upbuilding of these kids. And so I wanna present three ways that we may work together and advance this common goal and indeed ACE all the ways that we may work together this year. In fact, I have an acronym, ACE, in order to express this idea here because I teach middle school. And so this is what I have to do in order to succeed at my job. So to ACE the way parents and teachers can work together we can go by asking, challenging, and encouraging. So to begin with, asking. In that case, we're asking questions. Oftentimes, when I speak with parents, they get very excited about classical education. The reason is that they themselves were not classically educated, and they love the idea of their children getting something that they themselves did not receive. Indeed, this is a sad but widespread phenomenon that so many people were denied the, the intellectual inheritance, the wealth of the Western canon, and all its literary and philosophical treasures. But that does not have to be the end of the story. You may get this kind of education now, albeit through your children, by asking questions. Ask them at the dinner table what they learned that day, and better yet, what they read that day. Ask them to summarize for you what are the plot points of a Greek myth or the argument expressed by some medieval scholastic or an Enlightenment philosopher. Ask them to provide for you, to summarize for you, whatever it is they learned that day. By so doing, you'll be helping your student to better learn the material they're responsible for by repeating it and explaining it and filling in details they may otherwise have missed. And you, better yet, will pick up on the elements of a classical education, that intellectual inheritance that was denied to you. The point being though, is that by asking questions, you are getting involved in your students' lives and showing an, in an interest in what they are doing. And that reinforces to kids how important this material really is. The second way that we can all go about acing this common endeavor uh, is by challenging. That is challenging students to embrace challenges. See, years ago, I noticed many great men in history had terrible childhoods. 
George Washington, his father died when he was about eight or nine years old. Abraham Lincoln's father was famously harsh and rough to his son Abraham. And John D. Rockefeller, his dad was a legit snake oil salesman. He actually sold medicinal quacks, I'm sorry, uh, uh, medicinal cures on the frontier. He's better known as a quack. Anyhow, they had fathers who disappeared, fathers who weren't there, and their childhoods were full of hardships and struggles. But it was those struggles, those hardships, that helped to develop their character and prepared them to handle a far greater array of challenges in life. The act of encouraging your students to embrace challenges can do a lot to harden their character and strengthen their resolve to do great things, for often it is only the hard things that are worth doing. Now, some challenges may be productive, such as learning a musical instrument or going out for the play. These are productive in that they are making something, making music, making a beautiful performance, and honestly, probably making a fool of themselves. It's gonna find, you're gonna find it embarrassing the first time that you try something that's hard, that's outside of your comfort zone, but that's really the way that you stretch yourself and begin to really improve and develop new skills. Somehow or another, it's going to make you a better person for having attempted it. Other challenges though, may be restrictive. There may be a shortcut somewhere, somehow, and you as the parent should urge your student not to take it. There are many of these in education. For our math program, for instance, the teacher's edition for all of our books are available on Amazon. I may purchase one right now. The answer keys were available on a website called slater.com, but I'm just gonna tell you now, they've moved to Quizlet. I'd still be happy to show you how to access it. I can't hide from you that there are resources out there that will simply give you the answer. I won't go into too much detail about this new chat GPT thing, lest anyone here think that the machine wrote this speech for me. I assure you it didn't, it would have been better. But you can ask ChatGPT practically any question you want and it will return back for you almost instantly a well-reasoned logical answer. No teacher in the world could tell it was actually written by a computer. But I will implore you, parents and students, not to make use of these resources because it's short changes, it's short circuits, the valuable but difficult task of actually learning something. Of course, it always starts off innocent enough, just checking the answer key to make sure the answers are right. But over time, the student grows complacent. Parents may even grow indulgent, it happens. And pretty soon, the answer key is being cracked open. The first problem that shows up, the student can't solve instantly. And it's, of course, those hard problems that really force you to wrestle with the material and make use of the skills you learned in order to solve that difficult problem. In that case, for a difficult math class, or Latin, it's the problems that are your best friends because they help you to learn that material. If you check the answer key before you're properly stretched, you deny yourself the intellectual gifts that come with hard intellectual labor. For the PE teachers that are gathered here today, it's the same thing with push-ups. There are no shortcuts in push-ups, there are only push-ups. Parents, <laughs> please let your students know that it would be better to get a few problems wrong on a test or receive a late grade on a paper instead of taking these shortcuts, shortcuts that will not serve them well in the years ahead. So ask questions of your students, challenge them to embrace new challenges. But the last point, so that we can all ace this difficult task of building students' character and strengthening them and helping them develop their, their highest potential is encouraging. Now, I know this goes without saying, and I know all of you already do this. I'm not saying that you don't, I'm sure you do. But it repeat, bears repetition all the same. Encourage your kids and make time to encourage. The word encourage contains the French word coer for heart, bringing us back to that idea of filling the hearts and minds of students with good things. For encouragement is one more act, reminding your kids they are capable of great things. So remind them, whether they're your kids that you're responsible for, or just the kids in your class, remind them how capable they are and how proud you are of them, despite the fact that honestly, they may not have done anything to merit that kind of confidence. Set high expectations for them and positively reinforce them. And don't imply that your confidence and your affection has any kind of conditions or strings attached to it. I'm speaking more to parents here, because when I, when I address my, my three boys and I tell them how highly I think of them and how much potential they have, I mean, at this point, they haven't done anything to merit that yet. 
Like, but my love isn't predicated on anything that they do, right? It's on the basis of me as their father and them as my kids. And that's so similar to what we're doing here in teaching as well. We know that these kids have unlimited potential at this point in their lives, whether they're kindergartners or, or seniors. At this point, the future is a blank slate for them that they can write the future of good, hopeful things. So your students on the flip side, are gonna be far more willing to take those kinds of shortcuts. If they think the end result is gonna make their parents happy, especially since their, parent, their happiness and approval of their parents is one all-consuming thing that kids care about, no matter what they say otherwise. So remind them that it's okay to fail. And if they fail, you as the parent will still love them. How else are kids gonna to attempt to do great things and also very difficult things if they don't think that their parents are going to be there ready to scoop them up in their arms when they fail. Adults feel fa failure, kids fear embarrassment, but that sort of affection and confidence helps mitigate both. This maxim, the encouragement to encourage, could not be more important in this day and age. The examples that I cited earlier, Washington, Lincoln, Rockefeller, these are not exemplars in necessarily how you raise kids or how you teach students. They're exceptions. Perhaps they possessed a greater spirit and a heartier constitution than most people, just a bit more capable of withstanding and then triumphing over their hard upbringings. But kids are not like that. Most kids, the vast majority of kids are not like that. If they're mocked or abused or they encounter some sort of hardship at home or at school, they don't bloom like a flower. They wither like grass. If a child suffers emotional and physical abuse in childhood, that trauma can last the whole of their lives and their potential may forever be short-circuited. So as a result, parents and teachers, we have to work together and do all that we can to protect kids during the formative years when their hearts, minds, and character are being formed and fill those hearts and minds with good things. Bob Luddy, our founder, is adamant about creating a school environment that protects kids from influences that would mar their innocence and hinder their growth into responsible, fully functional adults. And not merely as the founder of the school, but really as the grandfather of a Thaley student. He wants to build a school worthy of the trust of the parents who can send their kids here as he has entrusted his own family. So as parents and teachers, we go about preparing students for a life of challenges, the likes of which we don't really know and cannot really comprehend. And the best advice that I can give as I close is to focus on the best and most meaningful idea, the one that will impact them for the rest of their lives, to give that student the wisdom he or she needs to attempt something really hard and then go out and fill the world with such good things. So thank you all so much for listening to my talk. And I want to welcome to the stage Matt Ogle, Head of Classical Education.